when every single major corporate entity, every social media platform, every studio, every network, when every film, sitcom, drama, everything focuses on supporting you and your life story and your narrative, you are not marginalized. And when all these powerful entities support your viewpoint against any disagreement, any dissent, against which they will censor, cancel, eliminate, fire, terminate people, again, you are not marginalized. Anyone that disagrees with you is. This is the Marxist way of looking at the world, the perpetual class struggle of the bourgeoisie and the proletariat applied now writ broader by cultural Marxism, by critical race theory, intersectional feminism. Now you can constantly be shifting and redefining by assumptions of, of power, influence, or invented narratives about privilege and therefore be punishing, subverting, and destroying everything that you disagree with. This is how Marxism operates. This is why all of our current entertainment stinks. This is why movies being produced are awful. Seriously, this is why. When you have no concept of good and evil, because as Marxism is, it is atheist. In a universe where there is no God and we all evolved from toilet film, Everybody is equally worthless and everybody, therefore, is just raw material to be valued or devalued according to your usefulness to the Marxist dialectic. Therefore, this struggle, which is almost Darwinian in its outlook, this struggle of these classes of groups of people constantly in turmoil, constantly struggling and hating one another and wanting to destroy one another, the division that is, that is promoted and preached by this Marxism, this struggle is the only conception they have that comes close to good and evil. This is why the Marxist doesn't know anything about good and evil. This is why butchering hundreds of millions of people, if necessary, because they disagreed with your position is perfectly acceptable because the only standard of good and evil they have is the Marxist ideology. Now, we've been seeing this late Wonder Woman 1984 where it's okay for Wonder Woman to sexually assault, I mean, to rape somebody because, you know, Steve Trevor is going to use the guy's body and there's no discussion about, you know, hashtag he too, wait a minute, what happened there? But because, you know, it's Wonder Woman and it's okay. It's Wonder Woman because she loves Steve Trevor and he's just in the body, so it's okay. It's, it's all okay because all of the conceptions of right and wrong or even my body, my choice or any of that, that goes out of the window because Wonder Woman is, is a woman. She's in a special protected class. She's this feminist icon now. And of course, you know, she wanted Steve. And that just her passion, just what she cared about somehow made it okay. WandaVision in the Marvel Universe, right? Wanda holds an entire town enslaved to the point where these people beg to die. But it's okay because her heart was broken. And you look at this and you're like, what, what, what has happened? But I got to tell you what, this is maybe where we ended up, but we've been going this way for a long time. If you look at the Marvel Cinematic Universe before all this, this wave of the MCU, before this phase, back when things were a lot better in those early years, it was already headed this way. The original superheroes of the Marvel Universe and the comic books, what did they do? They fought crime. They fought crime, they fought terrorism. Sometimes they would save the world against a global terrorist plot. But your day-to-day -day operations were fighting people that wanted to rob and steal and murder, people that were looking for revenge against people for no good reason. You, there was a lot, Dr. Octopus is not in his right mind and, and lashing out and he's a bad guy. And Dr. Doom wants power and he's a bad guy, but you've got a lot of criminals that are stealing and thieving in one way or another. Your basic crime story and your superheroes are people. Your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man stops the guy that's robbing the corner store. He stops the bank robber. He stops the, this is what they did. They did not do this in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You think about this. Where did that go? What did we get? 
Well, we did get Captain America's good origin story in World War II, so he's overseas fighting the bad Nazis. We have the Incredible Hulk, who is struggling against the corruption within the military-industrial complex in the United States that wants to exploit him. Iron Man, who is struggling against an international military-industrial complex that has been exploited. They've been using the Marxist dialectic to choose their bad guys and good guys since the beginning of the cinematic universe. We did not get an old-fashioned Wonder Woman TV of the 70s from DC. We did not get a Captain America, as brief-lived as it was on TV, the Incredible Hulk, who would help stop actual criminals in the process of his fleeing from authorities. We don't get that. What we got was good guy, bad guy that fit the Marxist dialectic. More often than not, the bad guy throughout the cinematic universe, Hydra infiltrating S.H.I.E.L.D., infiltrating our government. Ultimately, it's America and America, the American government, the American military. They're always the bad guys. See how that worked? Because it fit the Marxist dialectic. But now as it's gone full out woke, it's gone completely in the direction of this Marxist dialectic, they don't even know how to write a story at all that includes conflict because the only conflict that exists in the Marxist dialectic is the bourgeoisie and the proletariat, the imagined oppressed classes versus the made up and faked privileged classes, this struggle that you invented to pit people against each other because that's how you divide and conquer is your only way of looking at any conception of what we might term good and evil. So it's perfectly fine for the Scarlet Witch to enslave an entire town because she was heartbroken. Because, you know, she's just acting out against the patriarchy that stole her android lover, whatever, her robosexual life. I don't want to know about that. It's perfectly okay for a Wonder Woman to rape a guy over and over. And if you look at the discussion of this anywhere on socialist media, it's, it's so sick. It's almost funny. Because all the social justice warriors, of course, defend it. Well, 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 Wonder Woman, he was asking for it. Because who wouldn't want to have sex with Gal Gadot? What the heck kind of explanation is that? What kind of justification is that, especially coming again, conveniently co-opted by the Marxist left to defend this? What about his body, his choice? What if the guy was gay and you were forcing him to have sex with this woman because... Steve Trevor was in his, in his body. But in their corrupted and perverted worldview, all of these things are perfectly justified, enslaving the entire town, repeatedly raping this guy, all of the crazy stuff they've done and are planning to do further. All of that's okay because it fits the Marxist dialectic. All of these victims, your superheroes now become really villains are going to commit these horrible atrocities against people, but it's okay because of who they are or what they represent or what category they're in. Or they, they really were emotionally. They, they had, she missed her kids that she never had, so she's going to steal kids from someone else in another universe after enslaving a town that begs to die. But that's all okay because of her feelings, man. Come on, maybe she'll pick some special pronouns for this and you have to, it's insane. But this is the insanity of the Marxist dialectic. And now that there's the whole checklist that they will operate from, now that they've replaced everybody that could tell their rear from a hole in the ground with another Marxist, they don't even know how to write the story. They write a story from a Marxist viewpoint every single time. Every one of them checks the boxes. And the reason that very few people seem to be getting into it and they're going broke is because most Normal people, even if they bought into this somewhat, are able to see beyond it as well. So when every single story is the same, the only people that will enjoy it are the people that want every single story to be the same. And this is why they buy up intellectual properties and convert all of them to fit the narrative. And essentially, all you've done is change the costumes and sets of the same story over and over and over again. You can predictively spot by figuring out whether someone is a sex deviant or not, looking at what race they seem to be, you're able to pick out how the story's gonna unfold, who the strong independent whammy is that's going to lead this guy around with a hand, who's gonna get cucked, who's gonna be 
turn out to be the bad guy, how the villain will suddenly turn out to be a decent, decent girl because she's a woman. It's incredibly predictable because it is just like watching Soviet television in the 70s, just like watching Chinese shows now. Everything supports the singular party position. There is no story that's just written to be a story. So the costumes, the sets, and the names change, but the same story is repeated. And it's one in which their idea of good and evil is so skewed, they can't even write a fictional, compelling story.